Okay? So the next thing I want to talk about is uh, what is referred to as prediction. Okay? Because listening, you can have different types of tasks. It's depending on the stage where you are. You can have something before listening, during listening, and then after listening. You are listening again. Okay? You can have different stages. So what I'm going to talk about in here, before we move on to the transcription, is talk about one main activity that can be done uh, before listening. Okay? It is called prediction. Okay? Anybody can tell? Yes. Prediction. It starts from the verb to prediction. Yes. No, in advance. You kiss before you use your prediction or you kiss. Before you listen. listen, okay, to guess before you listen. Yes. You tell your students the title of the song, for example, and then you tell them what do you expect from the song. Yes. To expect what they expect from the song, what can come in the song, etc. So to predict what can come later on. Okay, so prediction is to give the students a chance to predict what are what they are, what they are about to listen to. Okay? What they are about to listen to. It will help them to get ready. Very important because the psychology of the students is very important in the learning process, teaching and learning processes. You have to take care of your learners, okay? Take them easy, or with them easy, okay? And especially in terms of their psychology, you have to make them psychologically fine, okay? As much as possible, okay? As much as possible. It will help them to get ready. It will help the learn, uh, the remember. It will help them remember what they already know about the topic and the listening job that is coming. So there are some mistakes there, but no problem. It will help them remember what they already know about the topic. So you are going to ask them questions about what they know about the topic. And so you know, to, to prepare them, okay? To make them ready for what will come later on. So for that kind of show, okay? So go step by step, okay? And the listening job that is coming. This is called schemata. Okay? This process that we do prediction, asking students questions about what they know, what they expect to come, uh, questions about the topics that is going to come, okay, to make them ready. It's that all this process is called uh, schemata. Now, concerning the types of tasks that you can do. I'm going to ask you here before we go on. Normally, I didn't want to disturb you a lot, but they should have given you that other task, which is you go to test books, okay? And then you try to identify tasks or activities that are related to prediction. Okay, now, from your experience, do you remember any types of prediction activities, tasks? Yes, and there is one that I know of, which is about reading on this thing. Uh -huh. For example, when you're about to read an article for the student, or when the students are about to read something in class, you first ask, ask them questions about, about the topic, which is something that they can read, and then uh, when they don't know the answer, or when they interact or just by the answer anything, after they start reading, they put, so they they put in mind those questions, and then when they come to the answers, they will remember, no focus. which means yeah, you don't really drive them and uh, Yes, my prediction, okay? Yes, it's an activity, maybe you could call it that way, hypothesis reading, related to reading, but you can do it also for listening, okay? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Good. So you can ask them to give them a picture of the situation, of the dialogue that they're going to listen to, and then you can ask them, for example, questions. Who do you think these people are? Are they friends or their brothers and sisters? And then you can ask them, what do you think they are talking about? What do you think Johnny is saying? What do you think Mary or Ahmed is saying? Things like that. Okay. Yes. To expect. What they can do to make them ready for what comes next. Yes? And if the listening task is in my units, it's included in my units, you can ask them 
what, what do you think is a conversation you are going to listen to is about from the end of the song? Can you repeat that, please? Okay. There is a unit, for example, in this about the war. Forest, yes, the, for example, about forest. What is going on? What is happening in the forest? And there is a conversation in learning the names of animals and stuff, and stuff like that. You can uh, ask them what are what can you find in this conversation? What are the things related to our yeah. Right, okay, yeah, that's right. Yeah. From your own experience, what do you remember? Do you remember any kind of conversation like this? Hmm? To give my proxy before we start. Yes, what? Or listen. It's or reading or whatever. It's an example, as you know, that we yes, do yes. a song, which is a pattern, a pattern, a pattern yes. song. Yes. Okay, and then we should uh, give our explanations about, uh, about which watch or about which uh, things we need to talk. Yes, okay. Yes. 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 about the topic, about the ideas that can be covered in the song. Yes? So that's good, okay? So maybe you are starting to. I did a prediction with you, <laughs> okay? So students can look at the questions which accompany a listening material and have to predict what the answers will be. So you have the listening, and then before the listening itself, you have some questions. Who do you think are the 
people speaking together. Uh, do you think they are brothers? Do you think they are sisters? What do you think they are talking about? So you think they are talking about uh, going to the cinema? You know, like helping the students, okay? Things like that, okay? Next, another kind of activity that can be used, or task, that can be used for prediction. Students, you have mentioned that, look at the picture related to the situation or picture related to the situation, topic of the listening, and have to predict what they will listen to. You bring a picture related to the situation, okay? You can have the picture in general, or you can have a picture related to the specific situation you are going to listen to, to the conversation. Or you can have a topic given to you, okay? He gives you a topic, one or two topics or three topics, and then asks you, what do you think the song or the listening, or what you're listening or going to listen to, talks about, okay? So this is another kind of task that we can do for before listening. Students can be given words or phrases from the audio and are asked to guess what it will be about. Okay? So, just let me recapitulate. Students can be given words or phrases from the audio and are asked to guess what it will be about. So, given words. So, relying on these words, what do you think this conversation is going to be about? Okay? In order to facilitate the task, okay? So, you have to go gently, smoothly with your students. Yes, that's another, that's another activity that is, you know, that's another step, the following step, okay? Following, following stage, yes, following stage. So you, this is before listening, okay? Yeah. Intensive listening, and uh, basically it's related to the stages, because intensive listening, in intensive listening you have stages. You have before list, intensive listening, during intensive listening, and then you have listening again, after listening. Okay? So they have different stages. Okay? Uh, students can be given a form, telephone message, or chart which are going to fill in when they listen to the audio. Give them a form, okay? worksheet, form, telephone message, or chart that they have to fill in when they listen to the audio. They use this to predict what kind of information they will hear before they listen. So in this, in this worksheet, we call them worksheets, you give them a kind of form or telephone message or whatever, and you think, what do you think they're going to listen to? What are the ideas that's going to, what is the topic? Things like that. So you give them something else to help them. You just, you, you don't just come in the air, hi students, what do you think we're going to listen to today? It's really abstract. Okay, so you have to help them, okay? Go smoothly with them. Give them something, okay? Picture, chance, or questions, something, okay? To make things concrete and help them focus, right? Bring a visitor to the lesson and tell the students the topic he is going to talk about. Students then have to think of questions to ask the visitor. So, for example, if you do live listening, you bring the speaker, native speaker, and then you can uh, tell them about the topic. Or he's going to talk to you about this. Now, I want you to prepare questions. What are the questions you want to ask him about this topic? So, give them some time. Okay? And then he's going to speak after that. Right? Students are told about the topic, students, they are told about the topic, you give them the topic, pollution, drugs, divorce, uh, charity, whatever kind of topic, they will listen to and are asked to do some research. That's what I did with you. Okay? They give you questions and I ask you to do the interview with your classmates and then do the, and then you come up. Okay, and then I do whatever I want to do, okay? So, students are told about the topic they will listen to and are asked to do some research. Buzz groups, we can call them buzz groups. This story or this word is becoming very fashionable. Buzz, buzz, okay? Okay, about it. 
They can say what they know about it, and what sorts of information they know, and what they would like to know. So after they do the research, then they come, and then you ask them, what did you find out? What kind of ideas? It's etc. Okay? Are you following? Yes. Right, everybody? Teachers, another type of task, teachers can play a short extract from the audio recording and ask students to tell anything they heard, what they think about the speaker. They can predict what is coming next. Before they do the whole listening, give them a short extract. And then you ask them questions in relation to that ex extract, and then ask them questions about what they expect to, to listen to after they listen, okay, for the, the whole lesson, okay? Teachers can play the whole recording, but tell the students not to listen for many. Are you following? You can have, yeah, listen. But please, you tell them as instruction. I don't want you to give me the details. I don't want you to focus on the details. I just want you to go through the listening first time and then pick up one piece of information or two that you think they are going to grab from the very beginning. Okay? So this is a kind of prediction as well. So teachers can play the whole recording, but the students don't listen for meaning. No, no, I don't want you to give details of meaning, story, and information, etc. Okay? They are asked instead to tell about any other information they have understood. Like, where do you think the conversation takes place? Like, relationship between the speakers. Do you think they are brothers or sisters? Or do you think they are friends or mother and father? Whatever. Okay? Etc. Using this, students can predict the content of what they will hear for a second time. And then, you can use this. And the questions you are going to ask them, use them to help them predict, okay, about what do you think you are going to talk about in the exam, and so on, okay? To pre-teach only the vocabulary, your classmates mentioned that, to pre-teach only the vocabulary that is crucial for the understanding of the topic, or vocabulary that is impossible to guess from the context, or new vocabulary. They, you are sure that the students don't know yet. So you can pre-teach that, okay? You, pre, you know, pre-teach, you know. Uh, uh, you give them a picture of what this means, this, okay? Something like that. Okay? And then you can, this is used as a prediction, right? So far, so good? So, and I'm, uh, you're going to have all this uh, I share it with you uh, this evening or whenever I can manage to be online uh, on the Facebook group. Okay? So you have the details and then you can do uh, whatever. Good? Now, the next stage, which is the listening. Okay? The listening tasks. The same thing again, you can have different types of tasks for this. Okay? You can in live listening, for example, students can be taught how to be good listeners by talking about active listening, by showing their agreement, disagreement, and by asking questions when something is unclear. When the live speaker is here and he's speaking, and then the students can ask him questions or can, oh, sorry, I don't agree with you there. Uh, okay, so then why? So there is interaction going on, okay? Students can be given a live listening lecture, and then speakers can stop from time to time to let pairs or groups of students reconstruct what they said and then move on. So when the, the live speaker, Richard, for example, is speaking, Jury is speaking, and then from time to time they stop. Do you think, uh, what do you think about what I'm saying? Do you agree? Yes? And, uh, uh, can you not try what I said? What ideas do you find most important? What kind of ideas do you find the least relevant? And then, after making sure that things are going well, students are following and so on, they are online with you, so then you go on, okay? Go on to continue the listening, the live listening. 
Each student can be given a bank card with 12 words of card. Okay? With 12 words in it. One activity. It's one example of a task or activity. For instance, for a listening text on it. Each card has different words. Students cross out their words when they hear them. So when the speaker, when the audio recording of live speaking is happening, so when the student hears, for example, has goes one of the words has is teacher. So what does he do? What does he do? He crosses, and then goes on. He hears student crosses. I have it. I cross it. And then goes. So students have different words. Okay. So each student has a card, and cards they are different from one to another. Now what happens is that students cross out their words when they hear them. So who crosses out all their words first? Okay, it's a nice activity. Okay, that's going to be done. Do you remember the last time when I was with you, the kind of activity you did? You were groups and then the judge the, the would be paper there for you and then you have to reconstruct that letter together and who does it first is the winner. So it's a very nice activity for the involvement of the students. Right? Teachers can choose, pay attention, it's not difficult, but uh, it's very, it's related to dictation. But it's a bizarre kind of dictation. I'm going to show you the video later on. It's a kind of bizarre dictation. Uh, so teachers can choose a text to read to the class. Text, paragraph, small paragraph, to read to the text. They can they take some words from the text and arrange them in a random order, alphabetically, on the board. Each student has to choose one of the words, whichever one they like. They can talk to their neighbor to make sure they haven't chosen the same one. Teachers can divide the class into two teams and get all the students to stand up. Teachers read the text aloud, and each student can only sit down when they hear their word. So, yeah, yeah, anyway. So, but it's a nice one, okay? It's for listening. Because the speaker, the teacher will be speaking, and the students will be really involved, really involved in activating their listening, and so on. Because there is competition, and you know the young people, they like competition, and they like to be the winner. So they will activate it. So the purpose is to help them with their listening, to facilitate it, okay? And to make them engage in it. So this is one way to do it. And we're going to see a video related to this, okay? Okay, listening tasks. Teachers, I'm about to finish. These teachers can ask different students to read various texts aloud all, the, all at the same time. This is what I call another type of dictation. And it's called the shouted dictation. Okay? Now, okay. Uh, teachers can ask different students to read various texts. So the students, one student here has a text. You have a text, you have a text, you have a text, okay? And then you have a text here, you have a text here, you have a text. And maybe you, you have to read, dictate for uh, here. And you have to dictate here, and so on and so on. So each speaker has got to dictate for somebody. And the strange and the bizarre thing about this is that you have to do it all at the same time with a loud voice. Not very loud, but uh, you have to convey the message. So you can imagine how it's going to be like. Okay? So this is called shouted dictation, and it helps the students feel less anxious about listening in general. Okay? Of course, this is not a, the group to do this, okay? Because there are so many. But I'm talking about here about the groups of 10, 15, something like that. Okay? So or, really, yes? There is one way to do it. The, the, it's easy to say no. Very easy to say no. It's very easy to say it's impossible to do. Yeah. What you can do, instead of asking all the students to do it, you just ask four, four. Next time, four, four. Next time, four, four. No, no, no. Maybe it takes the whole year. What's the problem with that? What is the problem with that if it takes the whole year? Because the purpose, the, the purpose is maybe you can do it, it's impossible to do it with the whole class at the same time. 
But suppose you are going to go to the home class one today, next week the home class, not easy to do, no, not feasible. But you are going to do it anyway, many times. So why not do it intelligently? Why not do it smartly? So that's the reason. That's why I'm saying, well, you have to be smart and be judgmental. Yeah. Yeah. So there are ways. It's easy to say no, easy to say possible. We can do it all. But if you want to really work and to engage the students and to do your job as a teacher, you this is the way to do it. Okay? Smartly, diplomatically. Okay. Next point: teachers can play an audio track or tell a story, but keep stopping. Okay, from time to time, you stop. Each time, students have to say what they think is going to happen next. So you they listen, and then you stop. What do you think is going to happen next? Especially if it's a start. Yes, stop. What do you think is going to happen next? Okay, things like that, okay? Next, students can listen to a series of Vox Pop mini interviews. Vox Pop is a kind of website, web tool, uh, where uh, people can record, use cartoons and so on, and record audio, things like that, and then you can use them like YouTube, but you have cartoons, you know, people, not real people. And then, a favorite hobbies, they have to match the speakers to different hobbies, okay? Football. So, for example, somebody is talking about his or her favorite hobby. Another one, another one, another one. And then the students have to determine what is the hobby the guy or the person is talking about. One is talking about football, another one is talking about playing chess, another one is talking about reading books. So you have to determine, okay, what is their favorite hobby. Students have to listen to a news broadcast and have to list five topics they hear. Major headlines. The news broadcast, you know, in the news broadcast you have headlines. And then each headline is developed. So you can ask them, what are the five or two or three or just one, okay? Students listen to a picture description and have to choose one of four pictures being described. Okay? You have the pictures, you bring it to the students, you give them the pictures, and then you describe, you have the pictures as well, you describe one. And then, who have, has the picture? I have it. Huh? Yeah, whatever. Yeah. You can do it different ways, but the easiest one is, uh, I, I'm, I'm sure somebody is not going to like that, uh, like uh, acting, okay? So you can use just pictures. It depends on the person here, because teachers are different. They can have people who are ease, at ease with acting and fun and so on, so they can go with you that way most of the time. But people who tend to have a different personality, they don't not at ease with this kind of thing, so they can do it from time to time and do the most appropriate like pictures and others. Or you can bring like videos, okay, instead of doing the action himself or herself. Okay? But these things can be developed, even if you are this kind of person that you are not very funny, you are not very sick and so on, these things develop by the experience, by the maturity, and by the confidence. Okay? Students listen and put sequence of pictures in the right order. And put a sequence of pictures in the right order. Okay? Yeah. Students listen to an audio track and identify some differences between what they hear and the written version of the same content. You have the audio and then you give them a transcript. And then they are listening. With the transcript you make some differences. So they have to determine the different words and content from the transcript, between the transcript and the audio that they are listening to. Is that okay? So students listen to an audio track and identify some differences between what they hear and written version of the same content, right? Students listen to phone messages, they have to fill in phone messages, okay? So you give them a, they have to write that, okay? Students listen to an interview or a conversation and have to fill a form, chart, or graph with the information. They hear. You give them a worksheet, okay, for questions or whatever. Then the other step 
is when you ask them, because uh, the purpose of this is that you're trying to go smoothly with your progressive level of students. So you start with the prediction, general things, and then go into some of the main things, and then you go to the interest and the task. Now, you can do this for listening again, and then you go into the details of the audio listening that you have. So students can be asked to listen again and do a variety of tasks. Teachers can ask them to listen again to try to identify more detailed information. Okay? Step by step, progressively. General ideas and then the details. Such as names, facts, numbers, times, and dates. Teachers can ask them to transfer the information in the audio recording to a different genre. For instance, if they hear a story, they have to write it as a newspaper article. You give them a whole listening in which they listen to a story, and then you ask them, I want you to write a newspaper article out of this story. Okay? This is a, so you are going deep into the listening task. When students listen again to a news broadcast or a story, teachers can ask them to retell it as if they were one of the people in it. As if they, that is they normally, okay? As if they were one of the people in it. So they are going to narrate it again, using their own words, paraphrasing, etc. And to suppose that they were part of it, okay? Students can act out the roles of people from the original audio recording, a higher level of uh, going deep into the teaching process. You ask the students to act out the same conversation. They listen to it, and then you ask them, John, uh, you make the role of John, you make the role of Mary, and you come here and do the conversation again. Act it out. <laughs> students have to retell what they have just heard making one or more mistakes, can their classmates find the mistakes? You listen to the conversation, and then you take it, and then you make mistakes you as a student. And then you give it to what are the mistakes that you find, that differs from the audio, the listening that you have heard. And then the students have to determine that. And here it's very important, because you are making the students work, okay? And involved, engaged with the listening. Life real may filmmakers, Students can have, or students have, to draw design storyboards, showing the scene and the camera, and go for speakers they have just heard. They film the scene with video cameras or their mobile phones. They do like Hollywood. Okay? So they listen, and then you ask them, can you make the scenario and do it, act it, and then record it? Okay? So it's, it's really nice, fun work if you really want the students to learn. Okay? Okay, so that's very uh, useful for engaging the students. It's different from just speaking, okay? Students can listen again in order to study language matters, another area that you can focus on. Now you go into the language itself. They listen again and then you start focusing on the language matters. Students are given a section of the written transcript with blanks in it. You give them the transcript of the whole listening, and then there are blanks. Somebody talked about it. You think somebody invented blanks? You talked about blanks, gaps in music, I think, or whatever. So you give them the transcript with blanks, and then they have to copy the blanks, and then listen again to check if they were correct. Okay? Students can be given a worksheet with expert excerpts from the listening. They do a language exercise, they then have to use the language in sentences of their own. Okay? Students look at a written transcript of what they have just listened to. They rewrite the section so that the new grammatical mistakes, hesitations, and other speech phenomena are cleared up. So, for example, if you give them a conversation in which there are hesitations, mistakes, or whatever, so you ask them, can you rewrite the conversation, avoiding mistakes, hesitations, and all types of phenomena that can happen in natural. Uh, uh, conversation. Teachers and the students mine the listening for interesting language. So you go into, it's like gaps. Like music, you give them song, and then you give them gaps. It's like mines, or 
can give them wrong words instead of the cortex word, and then you have to identify the, the real word used in the sound, okay, as an example. So this is the last point, okay, so when students have listened to a dialogue, teachers display it on the board, students read aloud, then teachers start removing words and phrases one by one. Each time students have to continue speaking the dialogue. By the end of this disappearing dialogue activity, they can do the whole thing from memory. You go progressively. So next, first time, and then you make things, the dialogue disappear step by step. And at the end, they have nothing. So they have to give you the dialogue from conversation. Okay? The reference is the same. Okay? There are many other things which I didn't include. But I think it's fine. So you are going to have this all in uh, Facebook group. Okay? Anything that you haven't understood before I go on? It's okay, yes please? This one that I think I'll teach is that a teacher can ask his students to write a letter or an article about the song. Did this song with a deal and people disagree with it? Yeah, of course. This is another kind of nice activity. You listen to the song, you enjoy the song, and so on. And then if you ask them, can you write an article? You have to say his students, you will not say the students to the singer. Yes, you have to chat in, for example, you can send it, especially nowadays with the internet, you can go to, you can find the email of the singers. You can send, if you want to send Obama, the email, you can do it. You know this? It's one of the things. Yeah, yeah, I think it has to do with the internet, you know, how much you like to have. Yes? It's a student interaction. Yeah, it's students interaction. That's the most, that's the key word. That's the key word. In all what we're talking about here. As this is the purpose of all this is to help boost the students' interaction, engagement. Okay? Yes? Last one. I think the important is to give students feedback. That's it. How are we coming to that? How in uh, how benefits this activity of listening? This is the purpose of students give you that uh, students are organizing their webinar and also. But uh, and to make a comparison between before listening and after after listening, uh, there is a kind of uh, and a kind of uh, positive listeners yes. uh, that's a positive listening and active listening. Okay, okay, that's fine. So that's it.